Imagine instead of L plane sorry the P plane instead of the P plane being inclined consider the P plane is horizontal what I call it P0 is a horizontal plane and there is a stress that is acting call it sigma give its plunge and trend say the plunge is 30 degree and the trend is 280 degree 280 degree measure clockwise from geographic north i am not calling whether it is compressive stress or extensional stress does not matter whatever be it the rest of the problem will not be affected by it so in this case if i ask you what is the vertical projection of this stress sigma on a horizontal plane you have to basically drop normals these normals intersect the plane at two points join that we can see since the plane is horizontal the line else also has to be horizontal and its trend of this horizontal line is same as the trend of this line so i can write the sigma h the horizontal component of sigma sigma h and sigma have same trend and sigma h has 0 degree plunge this is obvious and in fact the way trend is defined for any straight line this comes very close to it even this simple thing we want to do on stereo net so that there is no confusion so we are going to plot a horizontal plane p0 and we are going to plot this sigma it is an obvious thing but let's do it so here we go p0 is a horizontal plane and the horizontal plane stereographic projection is the peripheral circle this represents the horizontal plane this represents p0 it is already drawn next i have to plot the sigma stress which has a 30 degree plunge and 280 degree trend to plot it first i have to plot the 280 degree trend north is 0 east is 90 south is 180 west is 270 and then plus 10 is 280 degree which is the trend next i have to use this plunge value what i do i rotate the tracing sheet in a manner that 280 comes to the west 280 already marked on the tracing sheet comes to the west in the stereo net center remains the same next i have to move 30 degree inside towards the center 10 20 and 30 degree and i mark the point this point represents the sigma stress so I can come back not matched with the north and this is sigma. So here even if so here suppose I do not call it stress I simply say a line no change will happen even if I call it just a line. Next what to do in our previous example you remember I drew a vertical plane passing through the line. So here also I have to draw a vertical plane passing through the line that means I have to join this point and the center and draw a straight line. So what this straight line means? This straight line means a vertical plane. So in this case this vertical plane now where is the stereographic projection of this line of intersection between a horizontal plane and a vertical plane between a horizontal plane and a vertical plane the intersection is always a horizontal line and that intersection is over here 
the trend itself and the intersection is over here. If this is 280 degree, this side is 280 degree minus 180 degree which is equal to 100 degree. Also note east is 90 and plus 10 is equal to 100 degree. Each of these smallest divisions represent 2 degree angle and from this bold line to bold line this is 10 degree, this is another 10 like that the stereo net is constructed. So now I have found this line which is the projection and it is over here having the same trend as the given line of action of stress and that is obvious which is obvious in this diagram. If I try to demonstrate this is a horizontal plane and this is a line of action of the stress and I am dropping two normals. These two normals will intersect the horizontal plane along a horizontal line. This horizontal line and the given line will have the same trend. Plunge of this line is of course 0 as it is plotted on the periphery. So, it is a non-plunging line or a horizontal line. In one of my earlier lectures on the green board I have already explained how to resolve stress on a plane into normal stress and shear stress components. And we started with few easy cases. The first one was we started with a horizontal plane and the stress is acting we found the normal stress and the shear stress. Then we took a case that a plane of angle theta dip is dipping towards some direction x degree along the same direction of x degree a stress of some magnitude be it compressive or extensional is acting and that has a plunge of angle say phi 1 then find out the normal stress and the shear stress. We took then a third case that a plane P is dipping towards x geographic x degree geographic direction. This time the line of action of stress is plunging opposite direction that means towards x plus 180 degree and it has some amount of plunge and we found out how much is the normal stress and how much is the shear stress. These three were done. Then we discussed the fourth problem which I will solve right now. In that, in that fourth most general case a plane with known strike deep and deep direction is there say in the field we measured strike is east west the deep amount is 50 degree and the deep direction is towards south and we understand that stress acted in the past of some magnitude say 5 Pascal with a plunge 30 degree and trend also 30 degree. Then the question is on that plane how much was the normal stress acting sigma n, n subscript stands for normal and sigma s shear stress small s subscript indicates the shear component on the plane. Okay. So, here we are going to solve using stereo net on the green board I gave you hint here the actual problem solving will be done. First comes first we will plot the great circle representing this plane. East west is the strike, deep direction is south. So, this is the deep direction S dash stands for strike. The deep amount is 50 degree. So, I move here 50 degree 10 20, 30, 40 and 50. I have to draw a great circle passing through this point, this point and that point. I do not see a great circle right now in this position. So, maintaining the center to be fixed, I have to rotate the tracing sheet. I can rotate either this way or that way. Once I do that and I at one particular position, I find that those three points are coming in the same great circle. Now I bring back the tracing sheet to its initial position. We understand this is an east west striking plane which dips towards south direction and the deep amount is 50 degree. Where is 50 here? 
10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So, the plane has been drawn. Now, I want to plot the line of action of stress which is sigma. Plunge is 30, trend is 30 degree. In this position, locate the trend from north clockwise 10, 20 and 30. This is the trend. T has been plotted. Bring the T point at end point of the stereo net. I am rotating the tracing sheet and I am ensuring that the center is matched. Now from here I will move inside an amount equal to the plunge amount which is 10, 20 and 30. Then I mark it. Now again I move the tracing sheet back to its initial position. This point represents the line of action of stress sigma. Now, how much is the normal stress and the shear stress component on this plane? Suppose this stress is acting on this plane. Our first job is to find out the pole of this plane. How to do that? This is a deep direction. So, from and from this point, I have to move inside 90 degree, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 and 90. This point is the pole of this great circle or this plane. So, I can call it P. Pole is an imaginary line which is perpendicular to a given plane. This plane is in reality existing, this pole is in our mind only. Now, I have to find the angle between P and sigma. To do that, I have to keep rotating the tracing sheet and try to locate and find out a position where the center marked in the tracing sheet is matching with the center marked in the stereo net and this P point and sigma point comes in a same great circle. That great circle has to be drawn by hand. That has been done and I have to find out the angle between P and sigma. How much is that? This is 2 and 4 and 10, 14 and 10, 24, then 26, 28. This is 28 degree angle. So, I can mark this angle is 28 degree. So, where is the 28 degree angle in my diagram? So, here is a plane P and here is a stress acting sigma this line is a horizontal line and I consider the pole of this plane I can draw a line here and call it pole of plane P. So, the acute angle between the pole and sigma stress has been found out in this case it is 28 degree. This is a sigma stress this is a sigma normal this is a sigma S shear stress acting. So, I can write the formula sigma n equal to sigma cos 28 degree and sigma s is equal to sigma sin 28 degree and it was given sigma is equal to 5 Pascal. So, from here put here find out the cos and sin values you find out the sigma n and the sigma s values in this way it is solved. We have seen how to proceed to find out the principal stress axis sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 in case of non-conjugate faults which is essentially non-Andersonian faults. On the green board I have explained such a diagram where conflicting cross cut relationship has been found. I am proceeding from there going to show you actually in studio net how things are plotted. If one represents the fall plane 1's attitude this 1 and this 1 and that 1 
they are nearly parallel to each other and from the field suppose this is the data that has been found statistically relevant which we are going to take. Similarly, for fall 2 which is shown over here, this is the statistically relevant data set that has been obtained and we are going to find out the principal stress axis from it. So, our first job is plot the F1 as a great circle and plot the F2 as a great circle. Strike is 20 and 200 degree. So, here I mark the strike. This is S dash for fault 1 20 degree and here is 180, 190 and this is 200 degree S dash. Now, we are going to plot the deep direction which is over here since east is 90. So, this is 100 and ok this is the point 110 degree this is the deep direction. Next I have to bring the deep direction to the east of the stereo net that has been done centers are matched and I have to move inside towards the center an amount equal to the dip which is 10, 20 and 30 degree. Next I have to draw a great circle passing through S dash these two points and that and I can see a great circle here. So, with this I have finished drawing the F1 plane. Let me write it. This is the F1 plane. Next we are going to plot the F2 plane, 50 degree is the strike. So, where is 50 degree? 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50 it is over here. This is the strike and another is 230 degree, it is 180, 190, 200, 210, 220 and this is 230 degree strike. Next the deep direction is 320 degree, where is 320? West is 270, so 280, 290, 300, 310 and 320 degree this is the deep direction. So, I have to bring this 320 to the west side by rotating the tracing sheet. I rotated the tracing sheet and then I am matching the peripheral circle of the tracing sheet and the stereo net 320 is brought over here. Now, I have to move towards center and amount equal to the deep amount 40 degree. So, here is 10, 20, 30 and 40 degree. Then I have to draw a great circle passing through this strike, that strike and this point. So, with this I have finished the drawing of the fall 2. Now, the intersection between F1 and F2 is marking the sigma 2 or the intermediate principal stress axis. This part is same as what is done for the Andersonian fault. In case of Andersonian conjugate faults, what has happened? If I draw here, the two great circles intersect over here. So, that marks the sigma 2 principal stress axis. Same thing is done over here we can understand these faults are not conjugate and their strikes are different. So, therefore, the intersection point I mean the intersection point between two great circles is not plotting on the periphery which means sigma 2 is certainly not horizontal. If sigma 2 is certainly not horizontal I can say sigma 1 and sigma 3 are certainly not horizontal not vertical. Why? Because we know that the three principal stress axes are perpendicular to each other. If one of them is non-horizontal, the other two has to be non-horizontal and non-vertical. Now, our next job is to find out a great circle whose pole is sigma 2. Let me write down. That means, I have to find a great circle possibly here where sigma 2 is the pole. How to proceed regarding this? This is the process. Starting from here, draw a line joining the center and sigma 2. 
and extend so that it touches the periphery. To do that, I move the tracing sheet, the sigma 2 point, the north point in the stereo net and the center comes to the straight line. I am going to join it. and it touches the periphery at that point. Let me mark that point with a color pen. Here it is touched. So this is, this point represents the trend of sigma 2. Just like we deal with any line, so this point represents trend of sigma 2. Now, from this I have to move 90 degree on the periphery and plot a point on the periphery and here also I have to move 90 degree and plot a point. How to do that? I again bring that trend point in this way. So from here 90 degree means 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 and 90. So if I make a color, give a color, if I give a color line, this is 90 degree variation. That means I, am, I have plotted a line which is plotted as a point in the stereo net which is having 90 degree difference of trend from the sigma 2 strand and this point is representing a line which is horizontal. By the way, sigma 2 is not horizontal. Where is the other point? In this direction I will move 90 degrees, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 and 90. This is the point, I can demonstrate it in this way. Okay. So these two points have been obtained. And in this position itself, from this point, sigma 2 plot, not that this red dot, this blue dot, I will move 90 degree inside and I will take another plot. So in this way I have got three points, this point represents a horizontal line, same as this horizontal line and this point represents an inclined line. Now I have to find a great circle, draw a great circle passing through these two red points and this blue point. To do that I have to rotate the tracing sheet and bring this red point at the north and the other red point here comes over there in the south. Now I can see a great circle which I can draw so by drawing this if I now go back not matching north. This angle is 90 degree. This great circle represents a plane in three dimension and from there I have moved 90 degree inside and I have got the sigma 2 point. So what I was trying I have got I have found a great circle whose pole is sigma 2. Where is that great circle? Let us call it great circle K. This is that great circle K that has been done. Now this great circle intersects fault 1 and fault 2 at these two points. I have to find out the angle between these two points or in 3D I have to find out the angle between these two lines represented by these two points. So if I write the step here, I can say that the great circle K intersects fault 1, fault 2 at points in stereo net and actually they are the lines in 3D at small k1, small k2 respectively. So I can call this point as small k1, that point as 
small k2. Capital K plane intersects for f1 at k1 point in stereo net which is k1 line in 3D and k2 is the point of intersection in the stereo plot which is actually line of intersection between the capital K plane and the fall 2. We have to find out the angle between K1 and K2, K1 and K2 this angle is how much. To find out again I move the tracing sheet in this way so that the great circle that I traced in the stereo net is just below the great circle that I have drawn. Now I will start counting this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 112, 114 degree. In my drawing it is 114 degree. Let me cross check. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 112, 114. Okay. Now I have to bisect K1 and the angle between K1 and K2 by a line and that line has to plot on this itself. So 114 divided by 2 is equal to 57 degree. So, I can count from here 57 degree or from there 57. So, let me count from here 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 52, 54. Now, I will use a red pen again 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 52, 54, 56 and 57. So, what I have done this angle is 57 degree and that angle is also 57 degree. This red point is a line that bisects the angle between K1 and K2 lines in space and that line also falls on the capital K great circle. This point is obtained. Now, I again go back north matches with north, south with south, east and west and center is also matched. This point is a sigma 3 principal stress axis. Sigma 2 principal stress axis was plotted, here is the sigma 3 principal stress axis. You can find out that sigma 3 and sigma 2 angle in this case also is 90 degree. It has to be in non-Andersonian stress regime. It has also to be the same for Andersonian stress regime. You can check using stereo net that the angle between these two is also 90 degree. Now we are going to plot the third principal stress axis which is the sigma 1. Sigma 1 principal stress axis lies on this great circle and at 90 degree angle with sigma 3. How to find out? I again move the tracing sheet and place in this way. Now I have to move from here 90 degree angle on this plane. Let us start 2 and 4, 14, 24, 34, 44, 54, 64, 74, 84 and it goes outside. Since I am not getting 90 degree angle on this great circle in this side, let me try at that side. 2, 4, 6 plus 10, 16, then 26, 36, 46, 56, 66, 76, 86, 88 and 90 I do get inside this red point is marked and now I again move north over here and I say that this point is a sigma 1 principal stress axis. So what has happened? Sigma 3 is plotted, sigma 2 is plotted and sigma 1 is plotted. None of them at the center that means none of them are vertical. 
none of them on the periphery that means none of them are horizontal it is a non Andersonian stress regime and in this way sigma 1, 2 and 3 are plotted when we dealt with non conjugate normal faults such as this. In case of normal fault scenario sigma 2, sigma 3 and sigma 1 are deduced in this way.